What's going on, chess lovers? This is Zama Reese Bishop, and today I'm going to talk about overprotection and weak pawns. Uh, in this um, game, I'm going to actually uh, demonstrate with y'all uh, with this game uh, with Aaron Ninzovich. Um, he played a simultaneous uh, game um, back in 1926 in Leipzig. Um, so this is, I think it's a good example of like, you know, weak pawns and, you know, overprotection and weak pawns. So I wanted to really uh, explain that to y'all. Uh, for all y'all that don't know, overprotection is pretty much protecting a piece that's already protected, but even more pieces protecting um, that piece, where it pretty much gives that opponent uh, new maneuver and new energy level ideas uh, to not only defend the attack, but also give them some more um, positional play ideas. Um, hope I explain that to y'all. Uh, the way that I want y'all, but that's why I want to demonstrate on um, this game to y'all. Um, Aaron Nizovich was playing black and his opponent was playing white. Um, so his opponent goes to that three, e6 is played, g3, d5, bishop g2, c6, b3, uh, bishop d6. As you see, Aaron Nizovich, you know, developing bishop b2, knight f6, uh, d3, knight b to d7. Oh. Knight B to D7, Knight B to D2, and then Queen C7. Now, y'all, uh, in this position, you know, uh, with Aaron Nizovich, uh, he's all about um, overprotecting um, this E5 square. As you can see, he has a Knight protecting. Th this is what I really want y'all to understand. Sometimes overprotection is not always overprotecting of a piece. Sometimes it's overprotecting of a square. And when you do that and everything, that's when you can have um, a real advantage um, in a center. But not only that, when your center is secure, then you may actually have a possible way of flanking your um, attacker. Whereas this is pretty much what Aaron Nizovich did. He secured his center, you know, the square in the center. And then eventually he will start uh, flanking on the queen side. Well, not with B5. I'm just <laughs> not with B5. But y'all see, see what I'm talking about. Um, so again, listen to that principle. Once you secure the center, you know, secure the orbit protection in the center of, of a square, then you can start flanking on, you know, the queen side, depending on, on the position. But in this position, you can clearly see knight covering uh, the e5 square, the bishop covering the e5 square, and so is the um, queen on c7. And then if maybe um, the black queen can also maneuver to queen b8 if he have to, you know. And also, just to let y'all know, uh, another move that um, that he could have did was the good um, e5, which would even be even more better. Now, I'm gonna, I ain't gonna say more better, but I think e5 is another move to actually um, look at, and then queen c7. I, I just think this is um, beautiful, uh, a beautiful, like, in the center. Like, black, especially if you play it right, black black definitely has an advantage uh, with this. All right, so I, I just want y'all to really get this down pat. I'm I'm not saying use this opening or, or nothing like that. I just want y'all to get the ideas. I want to get y'all the ideas in your head of, you know, what happens when you overprotect um a square and everything? It is a lot of things happen. These these are what grandmaster. These are basic fundamentals. So that's why I want to get y'all to understand. Maybe I can explain uh -huh. it to y'all um a lot better than y'all just reading books. So I just want to give y'all a really demonstration of all that. So uh let's go back. All right. So queen c seven and then white castles. Right. All right. So a5. So so this is what I'm saying, y'all. So look, look what I'm saying again. I'm going to say it again until it gets embedded in y'all head. He's securing this square, this e5 square. One, two, three. Uh, it's nothing really. I mean, if you look at this position, he's not going to want to go d4 because he's block, you'll be blocking uh, this diagonal. So it's not like the d4 can come here. Black actually wants... Um, white to go pawn d4 so that he can block his dark square bishop, which is the whole point. So the whole point of Aaron Nizovich, like how he played his game, he liked to overprotect, you know, these squares. Uh, any any square that he can use to have his piece around that square and overprotect, it will help him out in order to flank his opponent. And that's why I'm, I'm showing you all this technique. You don't need to open a book to know how to do all this stuff. You know what I mean? 
That, that's why I'm saying y'all need to read the my system book because it really shows y'all techniques and how y'all can use it in y'all game. All right. So C4. C4 is play, right? So, and all White is doing in this position, his idea is to try to break into the center. And also, he wants to uh, obviously bring his um, rook to the C file, you know. And this is logical, you know. This is what players do, you know, try to break in the center, bring the rook to the C file, call some high vac, you know, uh, on these files and everything. You know, that that's how it usually goes, right? Then B5 is played, you know. So, uh, with B5, this is what you know, black one. Um, for instance, uh, let me show y'all something. So, like, if C captures and then C captures, it doesn't matter um, if white goes to uh, rook C1. He just have uh, queen B8. Again, he's still securing a square. Um, this, it honestly, it doesn't really matter what uh, white does in his position. Yes, you know, he gets a C file and everything, but with Queen C2, um, Black at Castle, and then maybe bring the Bishop on B7, and then bring the Rook over. So it doesn't really matter. It really doesn't matter. Um, White is not going to really... I mean, right now, he can control the C file for now, but in the long run, it's just not going to... Uh, the way that he wants. No. So, sorry about that, y'all. My dog burning. But, um, but yeah. So let's go here, y'all. So with B5, uh, his opponent actually goes C captures D5. All right. And then C captures D5. And then as you see, Rook C1. So again, whether it didn't matter whether he took with this pawn or this pawn, it's pretty much like the almost like the same thing after Rook C1. Uh, Queen B8 comes here. And then um, Queen C2. Which again, as you can see, you know, why it is trying to gain the C file. But you're going to see why uh, not only just overprotecting this square becomes great, but you're going to see what, you know, why it doesn't. It becomes a mistake, things like that. And, and honestly, um, instead of Queen C2, um, he did have to move um, E4, uh, which would have been um, pretty interesting. Um, if he castles uh, Knight D4, you know, he initially would have had, like, maybe some knight c6 in. But even after uh, rook a6, you know, queen e2, um, yeah, it doesn't really, um, I don't know. This, this kind of, I, I don't know. I feel like this kind of will still be good for black. Uh, I still like black's position um, in this. Um, I really do. I, I still like black. Um, maybe knight c5 black and stuff. Oh, no, not knight c5 because the e5. I do see this e5. Um, see, the thing is, I'm looking at e5, but even after uh, knight f5, I'm still thinking about this d4. I feel like this bishop is not really doing too much because it's kind of like bad right now. He has a limited amount of space. But the thing is, I'm looking at in this position where um, the dark square bishop is now becoming inactive. And so is this um, light square bishop, which is also inactive. And if white decides to take, then the queen will take with the queen. And now this bishop can't even come here because of uh, this queen controlling this um, dark square. I just think uh, black actually has uh, more space and he has uh, a more advantage. Um, in here, but this is what I'm talking about. When you overprotect a square, then white will begin to start making some so-called logical moves, and then all of a sudden, it kind of like goes down the drain. So that's just something for y'all to uh, look at. All right, y'all. So, all right. So, black castles. Um, e4. You know, e4 is not played. Then bishop b7. Uh, knight d4 is played, and then rook c8. So, so, so look at this right now. So, remember I told y'all the c file. It's like he gains the c file temporarily, but it's not really like a big threat and everything. Uh, so as you can see, uh, white does go queen b1 and everything, and then rook catches c1, queen catches c1. I mean, I'm sorry, not queen catches, but rook catches c1, and then b4. Um, after um, b4, then uh, knight c6. 
And in this position, it's like White is trying to uh, get an advantage or things like that. But as you can see, um, Black position is, is a little bit too strong, especially with, I mean, as, as y'all look at this game, like, Black controlled this whole E5 square, like, wholeheartedly. Like, he controlled it throughout the whole game. And all he did was just start maneuvering um, on the queen side, like, trying to flank him. And then White just start, I guess, making a logical move, trying to have some advantage, control the C file, because I guess that's all he knows. But I guess he don't – he has a lack of technique of trying to, um, you know, get an advantage. So – and that's pretty much what happened. Rook catcher C6 and then A4. So you see, so you see what Black is doing. He control. Look, I'm telling y'all, this is crazy though. All he did was control this whole e5 square. And again, like I told y'all earlier, it's not like the pawn can go d4 because you're you'll be blocking your own dark square bishop and everything, which is the whole point. And then you know it, this is just horrible. So as you can see, even after a4, d4 comes into play because now he's trying to threat e5, as you can see. But then after bishop at five. Then uh, e5 comes in, and now the dark square bishop is blocked, and um, he just pretty much uh, obstructed himself, so it's like crazy. But let's go back real quick. So let's say instead of d4, let's say he tried to do f4 to do the same thing with e5. But the problem with f4 is it creates a weakness across this um, diagonal, because then he gets bishop c5 check. And then if he decides to go d4, then he get this um, bishop f8 again, then e5, and then, you know, the black or the dark square bishop is just pretty much uh, obstructed itself, and it ain't really nothing he can really do um, in this position. Um, another interesting uh, move that y'all could actually check out, um, this is a3 move. So let's say, like, d4 is played after this bishop c5. If a3 is played, then let's say white captures, um, a captures um, on b2, and then if e captures d5, then e captures, then knight f3, then rook a7. Um, the whole point of rook a7 is to really double up on this um, weak pawn on a2, because this becomes a weak pawn, and then like I told you before, uh, if you can get your rook on a 7th rank, it will definitely cause a lot of damage. So uh, let's say knight e5. Queen a8, queen catches b2, uh, rook catches a2, and then yes, there's a little, um, I guess you call it a little tactic or whatever. Uh, rook c8, you know, black is forced to take this rook, queen catches the rook, and then queen catches c5 check, and then king f1. And I think in this position, regardless of what white tried to do, uh, I still believe that black still has an advantage in this position because of. Um, the pass pawn that's on d5, which would definitely become deadly, as well as uh, the knight e4. And then, of course, um, if the queen comes to c3, um, this b3 pawn becomes um, a weak pawn as well. Uh, so I think um, black uh, will actually uh, win this game. And then, as you can see, uh, I think black is up a pawn, if I ain't mistaken. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Yeah, so black is up a pawn. So um, this is definitely um, an advantage for black. All right, so let's go back. So after the uh, the D4, as we just saw on uh, this D4 move, um, you know, bishop F8 is played, right? And then e5. So white already obstructed uh, itself. He uh, locked himself in into a prison. You know, he's locked behind his own pawns. So after e5, then knight e8 is played. And then uh, f4 is played. The whole point of f4 was, I guess, to strengthen uh, his pawn on e5, you know, to, uh, to give it a nice center. But it doesn't really matter because after queen b5, uh, queen c2, and then a3. Now look at this. You, you you see all this. You see how um what Black is doing to him. You know he's actually um he's locking him in. And if you go Bishop A one, it's just even um worse. Um, I, I just think Bishop A one. I think Bishop A one is kind of like still bad. I, I don't like Bishop A one, but um his opponent actually goes Bishop C one, and then Bishop C five. 
the whole point of um, Bishop C fight, you're probably looking at this like, yo, like, what's going on with this? Like, you know, like, what's going on? The whole point of Bishop C5 is because of the break. Um, when you get a position like this, especially with pass pawns like this, that's so close. And I'm going to tell y'all something, and, and this is the principle. When you get uh, a pass pawn that's on the third and fourth rank, it becomes very, very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. You know, so as you can see, you know, with Bishop C5, uh, it's not even just giving up his dark square bishop. As you can see, if D captures C5, then we already know that, you know, white loses his rook. You know, simple as that. You know, we know that, right? So, which is the reason why that um, after bishop C5, um, white gives up his rook. He goes rook catcher C5. And then um, knight catchers uh, C5. All right? So he goes knight catcher c5, and then um yes, his opponent goes d catcher c5, but um uh, the recommended move was bishop f1 as a uh Zoang. I don't know how you say Zo Zoang or whatever. Uh this would have been um a better move. Um, even if you did moves like uh, queen b6, you still got d catcher c5, and then if you do queen a5, you still have moves like knight f3, even if you go um Rook c8, you still get this uh, move, bishop e3. So it gives white some fighting chances. But uh, in this um, position, um, after d catcher c5, uh, his opponent uh, immediately goes rook c8, and then knight b1, and then queen catcher c5 check. He already is up a rook, so he's going to exchange um, the pieces down. Anytime you're up a piece, you exchange the pieces down to win in the end game, especially when you got... To connect the pass pawns, um, well, it would be once these pawns are out the way. But um, either way, it's, it's an advantage. So queen catcher c5, rook catcher c5. Uh, now bishop catches a3 only because of the fact that, you know, these pawns are going to be very dangerous and everything. So you got to do what you got to do. So, um, But before that, I want to show you all something else, though. Let's say if bishop goes to d2. This this is the uh, the point. If you go to bishop d2, uh, rook c2, uh, bishop f1, rook catches a2, bishop catches b4, and then rook g2 check. And then there is nothing that um, white can do to stop um, this point from going, um, from getting promoted. For instance, if bishop, or let's say king catches g2, if king catches g2, you got a2 um, coming in. And usually, you know, you will stop them uh, from going to this square by going bishop c3, but it doesn't work because of b captures um, on b1. Um, and it, it really doesn't matter what you do, even if you try to move your knight out the way, or d2, or c3, or a3, doesn't matter. The black pawn is going to automatically um, promote itself to a queen, and black is going to win this game. All right? So that's one idea for y'all. All right? But in this position, um, bishop catches a3, and then b catches uh, a3, and then knight catches a3, rook a5, as you see, hitting uh, the knight and a pawn, uh, knight c2, rook catches a2, um, knight d4, rook b2, um, f5, knight c7, uh, f catches e6, knight catches e6, and then after knight c6, on d4 and then white resign because of this powerful on um, d4 pawn this pass pawn uh there's nothing that he could really do so i hope y'all enjoyed this uh, this is really giving y'all an idea of the overprotection as you can see again this is at least if you don't hear anything else if you overprotect the center and your opponent can't uh, control that center himself then that's when you could flank um your opponent on a queen side you know, obviously, depending on the position or the, um, or the opening that you may have played, but it's not really about the opening that was played on this. It's about the technique. So that's what I'm saying. When you overprotect a square, and I've seen a lot of times with Grandmaster, they like to overprotect, you know, the square to get an advantage and then flank their opponent. So definitely utilize um, that technique, as you just saw in this position. Uh, again, let me go back to here so I can show y'all. You know, he just... 
Aaron Nesbitt overtaking uh, the square. Knight on uh, one, two, three pieces uh, overprotecting that square. And then eventually, not only is your defense good, but you can start, um, and I, I keep doing that. You can start flanking your opponent, you know, on a queen side and then potentially make this a bad bishop. And then, you know, whatever other position you play, um, White would make a mistake if he doesn't know the position as well, you know, so use that overprotection and weak pawn. So that's something that, you know, y'all just learned. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Please like, please share, please comment. Um, definitely let me know what y'all think of the video. And also, y'all, don't forget to subscribe. All right, y'all. Peace.